Hello, my name is Elizabeth Leap and welcome back to my channel. I am very, very excited about this video. So if you want to know how to make it into Hollywood, without further ado, let's dive into the topic of what they usually don't teach you at acting schools, but you should know. So I made my own research and technically a lot of stuff that I'm going to be saying today, teachers actually taught me at school, but when you go to the set, in real life it appears that it works a completely different way so even though some of advice that I received from my teachers is applicable sometimes it's just not the way it's gonna be working in real life so I remember watching one of the movies I think it was starring Lily Collins by the way she's my favorite actress and some people say that we look alike but do you think it's true let me know so she's playing an actress there and her agent says if you want to be a successful actress you should only do three things go to the gym learn your lines and hit the marks and I think to some extent it is true because in Hollywood a lot of things do come from your appearance of how you present yourself so gym yeah it's a real thing guys we should all go and buy this super expensive Equinox membership but yeah learn the lines because it's very important to be off book all directors gonna say to you that they really respect actors that respect their work so it kind of works from both sides and of course hit the marks because a lot of people who go into acting they do not really realize that it's a very technical kind of job that you should stand in a particular place move in a particular direction and like you know what I mean right also if you just want to be famous become a reality star if you want to be an actor study acting so this phrase summarizes a lot of that and maybe it's one of the reasons why you decided to click on this video and watch it because real acting, like the one that you can see, I don't know, the work of Meryl Streep, she studied acting, she actually went to Yale School of Theater. Keep in mind that real acting, the one that is valued by audience and your co-workers, directors, producers, they always see the difference between the actor who is trained and who is not. But if one of the reasons why you decided to become an actor is so you can kiss people and shoot guns with no consequences Welcome to the club. No, I'm joking, but yeah, let's be honest. I think we have only one life and I think it's a priceless experience to be able to live different lives in one. So let's get started about the acting itself. I didn't really have a specific order for this video, but let's make it this way. So before it's everything that happens before, then at casting, that on set, and then maybe even like later, just some general kind of advice. You see that I have this fancy notebook that my friend gave to me on my birthday. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, she's my namesake, by the way. So, first one is Headshots. I read it in the book of Jenna Fisher, the one who starred in the Office TV series. So, if you're a huge fan of The Office, or even if you're not, you should read this book because it's amazing. But about books, we're gonna talk later, so stay tuned. She said that you should come up with five best adjectives about yourself because if you see yourself as a commodity and you have five distinctive features about yourself it's gonna be easier to go to the photographer and tell him like you know I think that my type is that and just say those five different adjectives so in this book there is gonna be a hatchet adjective list and me and my friends we decided that I'm confident charming pretty eager self-conscious also smart benevolent warm and adventurous and uh, no let's just stick to five of them but the main idea I think you got it like you go and you know what is your type because in LA in Hollywood and just in film industry in general it's all about typecasting it does not imply that you're gonna be playing only college students or prostitutes or teachers but you understand that for the most part it's gonna be one type of a person that you are usually associated with not in terms of your appearance but your personality a lot of people say that I do look like college student because I have a baby face but I also can play as a college because I have a very calm voice and my manners my body language is very very confident and very persuasive or promising like I cannot be an actress because my English still sucks okay let's move on the second thing is when you go to the audition ask how tight is the frame it makes people think that you're very 
professional so you can actually know that you won't be like you know out of the focus because if you move nobody's gonna see you right and the second one is for example if you're playing a very emotional character but you see that the director is not really happy with what you do and they give you like the second chance and they say can you do it a different way you're more than welcome to ask on the scale from 1 to 10 how angry should I be or how happy should I be and I know a lot of directors might say that oh it's a very stupid question to ask because now we're gonna think that you're not interested in the character you did not come up with your background story so why the hell you're asking but some of the directors who are more professional than those ones they will value this question because when you go to castings it goes like that so they don't really have time to dig down into this character's story because they have like other 100 people waiting ahead of you so they can say from 1 to 10 you're 10 and you should be like oh my god why is it happening to me so it makes our job easier and their job easier so don't hesitate to ask this question if you see the re reaction from the director it's okay it happens everyone is different but one of my favorite teachers in UCLA he said that it's a very normal question and it's very specific so why not the third thing is that I have here is uh, know your super objective actors will know that it's like a long-term goal for example your super objective is that I want to go to San Diego but on the way to San Diego you are driving the car you're stopping at Starbucks you're waiting in the line so a lot of things happen but your super objective is San Diego you know what I mean I'm not the teacher teach you but I'm just sharing my advice and I know what super objective is so if you do not please go and google that because actors should know this is like the first thing you should remember when you are developing your character and now let's move to creating of the character the fourth thing I have here is create before life it's essential you can also say that it's kind of like a before moment because on time it's too late because when they say action it's not the time when you become a character it's already your war character and now you do specific action as a character so it's your job to make sure that you're already in that state before director says action I know it sounds very obvious but sometimes I still even forget to do this because you become very tactical and you only start remembering your lines or which state of mood you should be in only before they're like oh we're about to shoot so keep this in mind five do not anticipate once again it's super obvious but a lot of times of course we're talking about people who are just starting acting because naturally it won't be that way because you are in the character so you do not expect things to happen but sometimes it still happens and you have to be okay with that be in the moment be present do not anticipate your partner's line do not anticipate the reaction which is on the third page of your script for me it's very hard I'm not the person who can be in the moment that's my life struggle but maybe I should make a different video about that great acting is performance when you have no lines so let's translate this weird phrase a lot of times people don't even realize that it's not about when camera shoots your speech your monologue or dialogue whatever it's when camera captures your reaction to what your partner says so it's the moment when you just maybe stare at your partner and listen or waiting for some news to be revealed you having no words just reacting with your face because a lot of times great performance lies when you are just listening not saying something happened to my camera for some reason it decided to switch off number seven but I think this should be like amongst top three make a bold choice and commit when you watch a lot of student projects you see that actors are uncomfortable in their own skin and you can easily see that they made a choice for example to be angry but then you have this disconnection with their physical body so it doesn't really kind of make sense to you it's because they made a choice but they didn't commit to it as an audience and maybe even as your fellow 
fellow actor you feel uncomfortable because you know that it doesn't make sense stick and do whatever your body needs to do so if you made a choice usually your body makes a choice too so it's a certain posture certain gestures so let your body take control over your head I think it's super super important and now number eight body language speaks louder than words that is so true and it's kind of related to the previous point that even though you want to portray a happy character but you're sitting like that and kind of like the signal that you send there is that you're depressed you're unconfident and these kind of things they do not make sense when you're talking about somebody who is happy because usually we tend to be very open our hands are open our back is straight so we tend to smile a lot but if your body says the opposite it's not gonna work it means that you are disconnected and maybe it means that you are just a bad actor but you can work on that even if it's the case for you okay number nine acting is mostly about orchestration of the relationships because acting is usually about a relationship between the character and another character or a character and his goal the character and his food disorder but you should understand that the core of the acting is a relationship it can be in different shapes and forms but it's a relationship in the first place so it's not about an item it's not about a thought it's about a relationship between you to that person thing or feeling and when it comes to castings I heard a very very interesting thing that relationship with the casting director is like going on a date so you always want to be the best version of yourself you always want to make people love you but a lot of times it has nothing to do with you so if they're looking for a certain type and you're not the type they will never cast you so it's not about you being a bad actor it's like dating yes it sucks and it can offend you but you shouldn't take it personally really because it's not about you and it's not even about them to some extent okay number 10 generate the work for yourself because as they say they pay me to wait I do acting for free it kind of makes sense because when you go to the set sometimes they really pay actors just to be calm and patient enough to wait for their part in this process to be done and completed so nowadays especially LA is a very e-commerce city and you have to have this very vast media exposure because the more followers you have on Instagram the more of those followers Netflix can get for expansion of their audience and it's exchange and I think it's very fair because the more you give the more you receive right back to the main thing about generating your stuff is that even my YouTube thing is just to help me to grow as a person so be constantly in this workflow because you know as an actor you don't really have a lot of job especially when you start so you don't want to find yourself one day sitting on the coach and just like you know being super depressed that you are not invited to castings and you didn't book the job so you constantly need to be in this workflow and that's why for an actor it's very very important to be able to create your own business and just remember that as an actor you are a business yourself but that's a whole different topic and I think it was my very very last thing read books educate yourself as an actor in the beginning of this video i already recommended you the book of jenna fisher who played in the office the actor's life a uh, survival guide this book it makes you feel less hopeless she gives a lot of practical advice that you can use and it's very handy and the way it's written it's very easy to read so it kind of captures your attention right from the very first word because it feels like you're talking to her and and even though I can personally say that she is my favorite actress but regardless of that this book is amazing and she is very honest and genuine and she has a very good sense of humor forward is by Steve Carell was it Carl? no Steve Carell right but the second book is by Robert Cohen acting professionally raw facts about careers in acting and this is the book that you should not start your acting career with because if you are a good actor I suppose that you are very easy to be influenced by things get offended because you're very sensitive so this is a hardcore truth about acting how much they earn in most cases how much they spend time when they have no jobs these kind of very unpleasant things to hear about the acting job but you should be very 
very objective about this film so maybe as he said if you finish reading this book and you decide not to be an actor he saves you a hell a lot of time I would be honest with you guys I haven't finished it I've read the most disappointing shit in this book so the last part was like how to get an agent or a manager I already know those things it doesn't really make you feel more confident by the time you finish reading that but it's the economic bible of acting just let's put it this way as you see guys I have much more phrases and kind of things that I wrote down about acting that I wanted to emphasize and share with you but maybe we should do a separate video because I tried to combine the most interesting thoughts and things that I had from my experience from the set and if you enjoyed a video like that please let me know I really really need your feedback and I love you guys you inspire me you keep this thing going my YouTube my Instagram all my social media that you can find below and of course my acting I won't be able to be as confident and as extroverted and stuff without having this channel because YouTube taught me a lot of things about myself a lot about this work in media and I appreciate this opportunity to be out there and be present and be with you guys thank you so much I love you and if you're a fellow actor or you're exploring your options I want to wish you good luck because this thing was not included here but it still matters and we all know that so wish you good luck and see you at Oscars someday I suppose maybe even next year right bye